views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. Each week, you'll learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness and explore the deeper knowledge within. Welcome home. Now here's your host, Dr. Kelly Neff. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Kelly Neff, and you are listening to Lucid Planet Radio here on Transformation Talk Radio at our brand new time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. 1 p.m. Eastern on the first Wednesday of every month. Sorry, still getting used to the new time. Um, I can't believe we're at almost 100 episodes. And now we are on the first Wednesday of the month. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody who's tuning in, especially our new listeners, and just let you know, you can always tune into all of our past episodes to help you experience healing and inspiration, creativity, and knowledge. Um, you just have to go to the lucidplanet.com. You can also find us on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, SoundCloud. Just search for Lucid Planet Radio. Also, I have some really fun new stuff coming up. Uh, I have a new show and a new book called Slut Logic, which will be making its debut in the next couple of months, all about loving yourself, empowering yourself to reclaim your sexuality and words that have been used to oppress and shame people. So that's going to be super lit. That's just something on the horizon. But I'm still also here working on the Lucid Planet Project, trying to elevate people's consciousness and help people navigate the global shift in consciousness. Remember, you can also always contact me at the Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly on Facebook, Twitter, and also Instagram. Um, Also, I hope you guys had a great Halloween, y'all. Um, now, as we pass Halloween, we kind of have this feeling of the winter drawing in and inertia and kind of that laziness starting to creep, at least for me, uh, certainly living here up in the mountains. It gets cold and you get tired and you start procrastinating and wanting to sleep more. Um, and I, I find that this is a great time to actually kick start our dreams, our goals, our desires, you know, we all have goals, but it can sometimes be hard to get from point A to point B. Um, So for example, you know, I'm working on my new project, my new book. Um, I'm trying to gain muscle and lose the weight I gained after my hysterectomy. You know, I'm trying to go to sleep earlier. These are just like some of my minor goals. Um, But you probably have some goals too, particularly as we go into winter and the new year. Uh, so think about if you're listening, what are some of your goals and how close are, how far are you from reaching them? And most importantly, uh, wouldn't you like a little bit of help in getting there? Cause I know I would, uh, which is why I'm really excited today to welcome leadership coach, public speaker, and author, Carrie Williams. Um, She specializes in working with uh, creative and entertainment companies and uh, entrepreneurs across the globe. She is really uh, had an amazing impact on thousands of clients, helping them achieve their life-changing goals with her Great Goals program. Um, And I just finished reading her book, Eye on the Prize, A Kick-Ass Guide to Setting and Achieving Great Goals. It's an Amazon bestseller, and it's totally kick-ass. So so I'm a psychologist, and Carrie's in a very similar field. We're going to talk a lot about the psychology of setting goals, the different types of goals, the difference of goals and dreams, and all the stuff that you need to reach your goals as we move into 2018. So on that note, let's please welcome Carrie Williams to the show. Hi, Carrie. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I was listening to the intro and I'm I'm excited. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I'm super excited to have you here. Now, I am dying to know, was it your goal to get into the line of work of helping people with goals? Or how did you kind of find yourself in this space? It was not my goal. So I worked in the entertainment industry down here in Los Angeles. That's where I'm based. And I worked in commercial casting. 
So my job was to see literally hundreds, sometimes thousands of actors a day and tell them no, no. Never tell them why not or how to get better or how to get to yes, but always no. My job was to find the one person who was already a yes. And it was really disheartening because yeah. sometimes people were so close and they couldn't get the feedback they couldn't get the input to make the change to get it to a yes. And so I started taking people aside, actors who had booked a ton and then stopped booking and they didn't know what had changed, or people who were getting a bunch of callbacks, which is where you go through the first round, the director and the producer like you and bring you in again for a second look. So they were getting called back a lot, but weren't ever booking and they didn't understand why. Mm -hmm. And what I found at that level was it was really rarely about the skill because when you're at that level, you have the skill. It was all about the mindset and the attitude and the goals that they were trying to achieve in that room and mm -hmm. getting out of their own way. And so I started mentoring people. They started booking. And then I started mentoring my coworkers and helping them grow and build businesses. And then the directors and the producers started bypassing the name on the door and coming to me for advice. And that's when I realized that this was a part of the job that I loved, helping people find their yes. And at that point, I didn't even realize it was a real job. I had to do some research to find out that coaching was an actual career. Um, <laughs> and there were certifications and there were training programs. And so while I was still working in casting, I went back to school, to a school called Building Graduate University in Santa Barbara. And I did basically half of a master's degree in evidence-based coaching. It's mm -hmm. part of their organizational management program. So I am a very um, logical kind of coach. It's a lot based on theory and practice and studies. It pulls a lot from psychology. Yes, um, I could tell that I'm from not, your book. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm not incredibly woo-woo, but I can bring those tools into play if that's what my clients need to help them. <laughs> Did, you Did you just say woo-woo? Did you just say woo-woo? I, I said woo-woo, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I thought, <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I mean, as an aside, I totally feel you because I'm a psychologist and trained in science and evidence-based practice, but occasionally these other energies in the ether, woo-woo-woo, you know, sometimes they do come in. Yeah. So I'm all about being dynamic like that. I think that's great. Yeah, so I just I'm the same way. I got to say, I have to be honest. It took me a lot of studies before I was like, okay, I'll try meditation. The science totally. is there. I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there is a lot of stuff in your book, you know, meditation and a lot of these practices, they're trying, you're trying to mind hack yourself, right? You're trying to get in there and change the way you think about things so you can get out of your own way. Absolutely. Because the majority of the time when we're not achieving what we want to achieve, it's not someone else holding us back. No, it's our own mind getting in our way. So can I just bring this up? Because something that has become clear to me recently, they say that sometimes people are more afraid of success than they are afraid of failure. And I, I'm writing this book and I just, I just got wind that a bunch of pretty uh, substantial publishers are interested in said book. And I honestly, like, I was so excited. It was like all my goals, you know, but I was so like nervous, like, I wanted to vomit because it was like, oh my gosh, now if I mess it up, it's just on me. Nobody else. Can you comment <laughs> to that? <laughs> yeah, I, we do. We have, we don't plan for success. We dream of success. We hope for success, but we don't plan how our life is going to change and the requirements that are going to change for us once we hit there. And a lot of times we are then stuck with the overwhelming thought that we have to maintain that success right? If we're yeah. successful once, we have to keep being successful. Otherwise that counts as failure. Yeah. Ooh, that's, that's, daunting. A, that's a lot of pressure. It I is mean, a lot of pressure. Do you think that's and one of the biggest blockages for people is the pressure? I think, yeah, I think it's the expectations we set on ourselves mm -hmm. and in small part, what society expects of us, but really it's the fact of us buying into it that is where the pressure comes from. Because if someone tells me what I should do, it, it doesn't mean anything until I believe that, oh, I should do that. And then it becomes an expectation that I have on myself. And mm -hmm. we are a society that really rewards outcomes. Yes. We want you to win. We don't care if you come in second. We don't care if it was your best race. We want you to win the race. And that's really counterintuitive to true success. Because true success is just improving yourself not in comparison to the people around you. I think that's really what important. we've done is shifted success. Yeah. It's hard because of our, our kind of like innate nature to compare ourselves to other people. 
you know, social Mm -hmm. comparison and psychology. So we're always looking around and then you're right. We have the society that, that doesn't really care if we did our best. Although I feel like maybe this is changing now. Like everyone gets the, the whole like quote, everyone gets a trophy, that whole idea, you know, which again, that's beyond or, you know, past my generation, but is that shifting it a little bit or I don't know. A little, but in my opinion, I think that shifted too far the other way. I think Mm. that we should reward true effort. Yes. But you shouldn't get a reward if the effort isn't there. So I was speaking earlier this year um, at a college in the Midwest without giving too many details. And I was giving a presentation to both teachers and students. And one of the students piped up and said, here's my dilemma. There are classes that I want to take and things that I want to learn. But I'm on scholarship and I have to maintain a 3.25 GPA. So I can only take classes I know I can ace Mm. because Mm. I can't lose my scholarship and I can't make my parents mad at me. And so if I don't already know it, I can't learn it. Oh, that sucks. And the teachers audibly gasped. (laughs) But but that is the education system that we've created, right? Totally. There's not a lot of room for experimentation. There's not a lot of room for failure. There's only room for success. And it's so sad because it goes against the whole idea of what the education system was supposed to be, which is like this free space to be able to explore and push the limit. Um, even as a professor, for me, though, it was like, if you want to publish an article, it has to be with only within a certain set of parameters, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, yeah. So it's it's really tough. I think it's really tough to find your way, and it's really tough to figure out what you actually want uh, in the context of our society. And um, we're going to take a quick break, but I'm really excited to get back here uh, on Lucid Planet Radio with Carrie Williams because she's going to talk to us about kind of the myths of goal setting and how to figure out what you actually want, like I said, but within this greater context of the society that will also recognize your success. So stick with us, and we will be right back after the break. Winning at the game of money. Lynn Brown is now offering Full Spectrum Finance, a progressive 12-month program that will help you to navigate through the mechanics of financial expansion. Finally, a financial planner who looks at the full spectrum of money and abundance. Engage you in the mental, physical, and energetic aspects of finance. This is Full Spectrum Finance. Are you ready to get into it? For more information, go to fullspectrumfinance.com. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Best-selling author, spiritual life, and business coach Joe Nunziata brings his higher energy and no-nonsense style to people who are ready to make powerful changes now. Wake up, step up, power up with a shot of Joe. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of high energy, no-nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. Visit joenuns.com. That's J-O-E-N-U-N-Z.com. Your happiness is your choice on Natural Peace Radio. Follow Sarah Van Ryswick as she addresses the power of emotions. Each month, Sarah covers different topics as she helps listeners activate their energetic spark and create powerful energy and amazing opportunities. Manifest your desires with Natural Peace Radio. For more information on Sarah and her work, visit naturalpeaceliving.com. Integrate spirituality into your everyday lives on Universe Soul Heart Radio. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Kathleen Johnson explores the concept of sensible spirituality, keeping you grounded, connected, and centered on the path to wholeness. Kathleen has dedicated her life to facilitating holistic healing and wholeness in others. Listen to Universe Soul Heart Radio and learn how to flourish, grow, and impact all we do on planet Earth. For more information, go to universesoulheart.net. 
Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and my guest today is Carrie Williams, who is talking with us about how to achieve your goals, which, oh my goodness, I think everybody could benefit from this. Uh, Before we continue, though, Carrie, uh, I want to make sure everyone knows how to contact you to find out more about, you know, your coaching practice, your workshops, your book, Eye on the Prize, and just where to get a hold of you. Well, there's a couple ways. I have the eyes on the prize book.com website. You can order a signed copy of the book there. You can share your great goal with the community, or you can send me an email, um, ask me about speaking engagements or ask me a question about your goal. Right now I'm on top of everything and answering every email I get. So get to me. Wow. Um, yes. If you want to learn more about coaching, my company is called rain shadow coaching.com. Uh, and that's both personal coaching and corporate coaching as well. Or you can just send me an email at Carrie at eyes on the prize book.com and I will respond. Um, that, which means a lot, honestly, <laughs> it's hard to get a reply from real life humans sometimes in this world. It is. And it, um, it, a yeah. lot of times people just want you to pay first and then they'll help later. And I say help first and yes. the finances will figure it out. Oh my gosh. Well, I love that. And I'm sure that must play in a little bit to the idea of people setting goals, right? Because like we talked about, we tend to equate uh, our goals and our dreams and success with a financial reward. But do you think that can be a trap for some people? I do. I think the majority of my clients, when they come to me, what they really want is to be happy, Mm -hmm. but they're not really certain what that happiness means for them. And so they take society's definition. And they say, well, if I have that car, I'll be happy. And if I have that house, I'll be happy. And if I make this income, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. So that's what they strive for. They spend so much of their life striving for those things that they just assume will make them happy. But there are things that we can do to choose happiness on the journey. And then the income and the house and the car are just icing on top of the cake. As opposed to- If you're not happy now and you have a mansion- you're still not going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how many boats and cars and toys you have. Yeah, I totally right. agree. You, you might have the freedom to make it a few different choices. But really, one of the things I work with my clients quite a bit is to recognize that happiness is a choice. Mm-hmm. I is. have met people who are in the direst circumstances of their life and they choose to be happy. And I've met people that have a life that everyone else who looks at it would envy and they're not happy. So do you think that most people want, like, if we look at like, what do you want out of your life? And we ask people this question, what do you think most of them would say? Do they know? Do they not know? Do they, do they want to be happy? What do they want? I think that most people have an inkling if they actually sit and listen to themselves. The dilemma is a lot of them don't think they can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's easier not to acknowledge what you want if you don't think you're going to get it anyway. Right. Yep. Totally. So, So, yeah. But I think at a core level, we know, we know what's important to us. We know what we value. We know where we would like to be in this world. We just don't know if we can have it. Yes. So how does your, I want to talk a little bit because I think what's important here is kind of the qualities of the goals we set and the way we set these goals, because you're right. A lot of people don't feel worthy. They don't feel like it's possible. Um, and especially people who, and you've been in Hollywood. I mean, that's like the most competitive, <laughs> right? So all these yeah. people keep trying and the fact that they made it out there and they're sh- showing up for auditions, you know, it's, it's really competitive. So I guess one of the first things that we need to look at is what are the three biggest myths about setting goals? And I think from here, we can start kind of unraveling this and finding where we can like start setting goals that are practical and attainable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the biggest myth is I don't have enough time. 
right? Because mm. we're really overwhelmed. Our plates are really full. And a lot of people can't even manage proper self-care, let alone pick a big goal and work towards it. But the mm. fact of the matter is when you focus and prioritize, you automatically get better at organizing your time. Yes. So you're going to become more efficient. And you maybe have, I think you have some tips for this in the book, I believe. <laughs> oh, yes. There's an entire oh, yeah. chapter on time management and calendaring and and it gives different perspectives because some people are really into calendars and schedules and some people are like, no, don't make yeah. me write anything down. And mm-hmm. I really encourage in this book, you working in the way that works best for you. I tried to make it as personalized as possible. I'm sure you noticed as you go through yes. with each chapter, there's great goal activities yes. so that you can answer your own questions and make your own discoveries because it's so much more impactful and powerful than if I just tell you. But That's what I, I really love. You're the on you. Yeah. And you know, if someone's going to tell you something and it's not going to work for you, you're not even going to try. Um, like we were saying, most self-help books, people don't read them. They buy them, but they don't really read them. And even if they read them, they don't really use them. Yeah. But well, it's um, the same thing. this if one is you different. Look at statistics, if you look at statistics, when you go to a doctor and a doctor wants you to change a habit because the possible repercussion is death, how, mm-hmm. what percentage of people do you think actually change it, that habit? Sure. Very good question. I imagine it's pretty low. Less than 5%. Yeah. Isn't that creepy? <laughs> and that's when your life is on the line. Now, True. in typical goal setting, it's not your life on the line. So the stakes aren't nearly as high. So it's really easy to have a good intention, but to let it go by the wayside. Hmm. That's a very good point. Um, what is another myth about goal setting? Uh, this is, we kind of already touched on this, but there's this belief out there that it's better not to try than it is to try and fail. Yep. And that's because we are really wrapped up in our self-identity and we have trouble separating the concept of failure being a process that we can learn and grow from. We instead make it incredibly personal and say, if I fail, then I am a failure. Yes. Yes. Right. It, that's and totally true. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've talked to so many successful people on this show. And the one thing they all have in common is they failed spectacularly multiple times before they hit success. I'm I'm planning to fail today. It's something, you know. (laughs) Good. And that's what I tell my clients. I'm like, fail big, fail hard, learn a lot, fail fast, pick yourself up, go. Well, my boyfriend, uh, Jimmy, he's one of my inspirations in life, but he always tells me failure is like a core ingredient in the recipe for success. Like mm-hmm. it's like the main component when you make in the little batch that's going to make you successful and you can't, right. you can't get hot. You can't get down on yourself. People, everybody messes up some, um, and some people do it like amazingly. <laughs> some people are just good at failing and they just take it in their stride and they learn quickly and other people ruminate and dwell and they get stuck there and then they can never pull themselves out of that hole. Yeah. Uh, failure is an opportunity for growth. Just remind yes. yourself of that. Even if it's uncomfortable and it feels it sucks, it is the greatest opportunity for growth. And you're going to learn strategies that will help you succeed the next time as long mm-hmm. as you try again. The problem is mm-hmm. we're so averse to failure that we stop trying. So we can change our expectations here and say, I don't expect to succeed, but I'm going to do it anyway because it'll make me stronger and I'll get better. As opposed to, I expect to succeed, and then I'm like devastated because my expectations weren't met. Because so much of life, yeah. and you know, it's expectation management. Exactly. Or even rephrase it so you say, "I'm just going to try and see what happens." Yeah, there you go. Even better. <laughs> just gonna try and see because you don't know what you don't. You have no idea what the outcome of your decisions will be. You don't. Mm-hmm. And or who no. you're gonna meet. Did or you what's ever think happen. that you would have multiple offers on this book? I hoped so, but I didn't actually think it was going to happen because honestly, I didn't think I'd actually get around to writing it because I'm so busy with everything else. (laughs) So now it's like, you actually get to sit down and write this girl. I'm like, oh, (laughs) crazy. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's totally awesome. Okay. So what, um, before we go to the break, what, let's talk about the third, um, myth about goal setting. So really quickly, I'm sure you've heard this. Have you heard the saying that if I force, if I do something for 21 days, it will become a habit? I, you know, I, I just, I'm very skeptical of that, but yes, I have heard it. Yeah, I am as well, because it's not true. 
<laughs> so what I hope is that if you do it for 21 days, you'll go through the psychological process of transition where it will become a habit and you'll psychologically accept it. And on the 22nd day, it will miraculously become easy. But what happens is we grit our teeth, we force ourselves to do something for 21 days. And on the 22nd day, we go, well, that didn't work. And we go back to our yep. original. Yep. So I thought, I mean, I always thought the heuristic that was more accurate was like 10,000 hours of, of work on something makes you an expert. Like that's a mm -hmm. lot more than 21 days. <laughs> that's what I always kind of think of. So it's like, you know, I've, I've been writing this long or I've been doing, I've done like a hundred shows. I'm getting, I'm getting there. I still got a long ways to go. Yeah. You know, yeah. here's, here's what I like to remind people. Practice makes better, not yeah. perfect because there's no such thing, yeah. but practice makes better. And we're really good at what we consistently practice. So if you practice making a choice on a daily basis, eventually you're going to get really good at it and it's going to be easy and it will be subconscious. What advice do you have but for people you, who are looking, I'm sorry, people no, who are looking for the, um, you know, immediate kind of like, okay, it's day 22. It's not working. What advice do you have for people to kind of stick with it? So imagination is a powerful tool. Most okay. goal setters talk about willpower and I talk about that in eyes on the prize, yep. but imagination is just as powerful. So in that case, use some strong visualization and really picture what your life will be like when you have achieved this goal. How will it change for you? What will it look like? What will it feel like for you? Um, how will your attitude about yourself and the world be different once you've achieved this? And really strongly imagine it. And that tends to be enough motivation to keep going. Whereas if we just pull from our bank account of willpower and force ourselves to, that gets really old really quickly. Wow, that is fantastic advice. And I actually really enjoyed that activity in the book where it's like, write about your life in five years if you achieve your goals, like in great detail. So then mm -hmm. you start actually putting yourself there and you're like, wow, it is worth it. I'm doing this for a purpose. I'm not just like punishing myself with no payout. Like, I think that's a really awesome piece of advice. Thank you, Carrie. Um, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, Carrie Williams is going to share more wisdom with us about goal setting and achievement. And we're going to start off, too, by talking about the difference between dreams and goals. Everybody uses these two interchangeable, but they're definitely different. So stick with us here on Lucid Planet Radio, and we'll see you in a few minutes. you wish you had more joy in your life check out the new book by robert max schoenfeld for the love of joy a 30-day adventure for creating joy in your life because you deserve more joy more love more health more abundance and more life available now on amazon get your copy today visit the art of powerful living.com that's the art of powerful living.com are you searching? Are you searching? Looking, for a sign? looking for a sign? A message you need to hear from the great unknown, from the most mysterious place that is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are. The universe put someone here to talk to, someone God gave a blessing to that you may find insight with. TheAngelLady.net, 1-800-323-1790. In this day and age, if you don't reinvent yourself, you may never find balance, peace, and the sustainable life that is your birthright. Angela Watson Robertson, known as the Reinvention Warrior and the host of Breakthrough Radio Show Masters of Reinvention, is here to help you reinvent every area of your life. Tune in and hear from the best in the personal transformation business and discover tips and tools for positive change. Live every month on Transformation Talk Radio. Be you plus live your purpose equals joy. That's the motto of Unstuck Joy with Vicki Todd. Vicki believes you were born with gifts that are meant to make the world brighter. Each show will feature an art visioning journal prompt to help you create your way to soul clarity. If you're ready to get unstuck and create more joy, this show is for you. Tune in the first and third Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit VickiWorldArt.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. 
Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Check us out at drpatcho.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Oh, my goodness. We are back on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I am so excited to have author and leadership coach Carrie Williams here talking to me today about how we can all kickstart our goals. Woo! Now, Carrie, um, before we left off, we were talking about how important it is uh, to be able to imagine and visualize ourselves attaining our goal in the future. But when I hear the word Uh, like imagine, I think more of dreaming and less of goals. And so I'm wondering if you could explain to me kind of the difference between dreams and goals and how they work in the mind. Sure. So here's the thing to remember. Every goal starts as a dream. A dream is just a hope or a wish for the future. And a goal is a dream that you've created a plan to reach and you're actually taking consistent action. So a dream is when you're waiting for something to happen to you. And a goal is when you decide to make that happen. Yes. So for example, for a long time, I'm going to guess you dreamed of writing a book. It was a great idea. Yes. You thought about it. You imagined it. Yes. And then at some point it tipped and it became a goal and you created a plan and started executing. Can I tell you, can I share a weird story about that? Yes. Um, my first book that I wrote Um, it went from a dream to a goal literally because I had a dream about the book and I, (laughs) this is so weird, but I dreamt (laughs) that I had this book idea and somebody else had written it when I, and I woke up and I was so pissed because I was like, that's my idea. And that's when it went from being like a dream in my head to a goal that I was like, I'm going to do this. And I did it. And it, it was really like immediate shift. So I don't know if that's normal, but that's how it was for me. There is no normal. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's, it's that quick. It's immediate. Sometimes it takes someone years for it to go from a dream to a goal. It depends on the type of person you are. Are you incredibly analytic? Do you have to have everything planned out and know the solid return on investment before you're willing to commit? Or are you the kind of person that just jumps in and makes it happen? Mm-hmm. I'm it's different for everyone. Yeah. Kind of all of those things. <laughs> um, I, I'm personally much more of a planner. Yeah. I'm getting better at just looking and leaping and yeah. trusting that I will land. But that's my growing edge. I'm definitely, I like to know every alternative. <laughs> so Carrie, let me ask you, are you a perfectionist or were you a perfectionist? Oh, I absolutely was. I, um, I grew up in the gifted children program at school. So every mm-hmm. Thursday they would bus us and put us in a special class. And so at a very early age, I learned that I was smart and it became really imperative to me to maintain yeah. that title. And so what happened was I became really obsessed with proving how smart I was. And so if something came into my path that I saw and I didn't think that I could do it well initially, I thought it was going to be a struggle for me or I didn't think I could win or succeed. I just wouldn't attempt it because it would make me look not smart. Kind of like which, those kids in mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. Right? Which you have, and I know yeah. is the classic definition of a fixed mindset. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, exactly. Putting yourself over and over, fearing taking the risk. Because I wasn't encouraged to learn and grow and fail. I was told be smart. So what changed for smart. you? What changed for you and how can other people kind of learn from that? So here's the thing to remember, that you can have a fixed mindset and be incredibly successful in this life, but eventually you will hit the limits that you can reach with a fixed mindset. And you have to switch over to growth where you value effort and energy um, 
where you believe that you can increase your skills and your knowledge. Yeah. Because otherwise you're, you're, you're going to hit your ceiling. Oh yeah. And then there's nowhere to go. I mean, then you're like, you've done everything that you could possibly do well. And now you're just kind of stuck. And if you don't want to try anything that you might suck at, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Just go back right. and do the and same can, thing over and over. Yeah. And we can do little things. If you find yourself in a fixed mindset, know that everyone's growth and fixed at different points and in different p- parts of their lives, you can do little things to challenge yourself. Pick something that you normally wouldn't try to do Yeah, and try it. And if you suck the first time, try it again. So Keep, if you right. say things like, I'm just not a math person, you know what? Go on conacademy.com and take one of their 10 minute math classes. Challenge there yourself. Go. There you go. I hate when people say they're not math people because everyone's a math people. We're made of math. We have numbers. We're, I mean, everything about our existence is mathematical. So there yeah. is math in all of us. So I believe in you. <laughs> well, I also hate, I hate when people go, oh, I'm just not a creative. No, yeah. you are. No, that's, Everybody's you, got creativity. Everybody. I, well, I used to say the same thing because I was a writer. So I always felt like that wasn't really like creative in the way that making art was or like being a painter or a sculptor or a musician. Writing's very like linear. It's still very logical. But um, part of me being able to write my books and start all of this was this book called The Artist Way. Have you heard of The Artist Way? I have done The Artist Way. Okay. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> it helped me so much. That's a commitment. It is a commitment, but it really, that was about uh, 2012 is when I did that. And I, you know, my goal was within five years to have a radio show and a book. And I had both of those things within like two years and it was amazing. Um, so that helped me. And your, your book eyes on the prize reminds me a little bit of it in terms of the exercises and the way that you're reflecting on yourself. Although it's, it's, it's a different tone, but it still has that same energy to it of like visualization and engaging Mm -hmm. and really getting to know yourself. Yes. That's what I love from the artist way. I love that the activities made it really personal and it was my own journey. Um, It wasn't prescribed to me and I wasn't following someone else's rules. What I didn't like about it was that was a commitment. It was a long time consuming process. Yeah, it was. And and I find that, especially with coaching, if I say, great, we're going to do a goal setting process and here's a hundred steps you have to take, people go, (laughs) stop, and we don't take the first one. So I wrote Eyes on the Prize. It's 107 pages long on purpose. I want it short and sweet. I want you to be able to tackle a chapter a day or a week or however long you want to break it up and make progress fairly quickly. And I wanted to simplify the process, but also make it your own personal journey so you can discover yourself along the way. It's honestly a great little workbook and I strongly recommend it to everyone. And again, nothing to be afraid of because that's the big people's biggest thing about like setting goals. They don't want there to be a lot of work involved, (laughs) you know, like, oh no, it's too much work to even think about this. I don't have time, but this makes it pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, let's not kid ourselves. It doesn't make it easy because anything worth having is worth putting some effort and energy into. Yes, exactly. But it will simplify the process. Yes, which is huge. Um, and I wanted to just briefly continue to talk about this process, this the goal journey process that you refer to, that it's not just about the end result, that it is a journey, and that there are certain characteristics that people can have that will make their goal journey more successful. I know we just talked about like not having a fixed mindset, um, but Carrie, what are some of the other characteristics that people would benefit from having on their goal journey? So the ones that I found most common and and what I started to study was my clients who really quickly achieved their goals and then consistently did that. What were they doing differently or how did they approach it differently than people who struggled along the way? And I found two things. One, they were determined. So they really committed to the process. They Mm -hmm. gave the best that they had at any moment. They didn't always understand the purpose or the reason for the task that they were given, but they accepted that it had to be done and they completed it wholeheartedly and trusted that once they took this step, the next step would be there. Um, And then they're self-aware. They Mm. really recognize when they're getting in their own way and they move. That is a good characteristic. Yeah. And, And that is the biggest one. If you have nothing else, if you can learn that, because we all say, well, I haven't reached that goal because 
I don't know the right people, or I don't make enough money. There's a litany of excuses that are really just challenges that we use as a reason to stop. But if you can recognize when you are getting in your own way, when you are stopping yourself and get around that, you're limitless. Yeah. So is this, is this an, is this a question of mindset or what, what is it about the people that can do that? Because I think that's a, an unbelievable skill for every, everything in life, whether it's about mm-hmm. goals or interpersonal relationships or even self growth. Um, how, what, is there a specific mindset do you think associated with people who are more aware or is, is there something they're doing that's making them more self-aware? So I think it's more a mindfulness practice instead of a mindset. I think mindset comes after, but yes. really checking in with yourself and being honest with yourself. I think that especially in the world I'm in down in Hollywood, the tendency is to look in the mirror and either only talk about what you'd like to see, right? All the great yep. things and put a positive spin on things. Right. Or you look in the mirror and you see all the worst aspects that you're afraid yeah. people will see. It's really and you hard bounce between the, the two. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's really hard for someone to look in the mirror and be objective. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, totally. Being self-objective is, is really yes. the hardest thing for sure. Um, well, I, I, I know there's so many practices. I mean, mindfulness meditation is really great for doing that mm-hmm. and kind of like sitting on the cushion, breathing, looking at yourself, kind of allowing the thoughts to come in and out. And you, you, you begin over time to see more of yourself, more of the good and the bad. And as you yeah. kind of can step away, it definitely does help. Um, but it's not, unfortunately, cause I, I wish I could just tell everyone like as a psychologist, like just meditate, <laughs> right. but you know, it's not for everyone. Right. Right. No, it's not. And, and again, it takes time, but there are little things you can do. You can do emotional check-ins during the day, just oh, yeah. set a timer on your phone and every so often check in with yourself and say, okay, what am I feeling right now? And what do I need right now? That's a good idea. They have apps um, for that too. They do. Yeah. They have apps for that. They got apps for that. Uh, <laughs> they have apps for everything. They got apps for everything. The they. <laughs> um, what else? Anything um, else? Yeah. So a lot of times um, when we have unfulfilled needs, it comes out as complaints. Yeah. I, I'm sure you know people who complain a lot, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Those complaints are really, they need something and they're not asking for it. So if you catch yourself complaining, just check in and say, wait, wait, what is it I really need right now? Yep. A lot of times it's just acknowledgement or connection. And so I've had clients that have, every time they catch themselves starting to complain, they ask for a hug instead. Now, you don't have to go hugging strangers, but (laughs) whatever works for you, just acknowledge that a complaint is an unfulfilled need. And if you can check in with yourself and figure out what that need is, you're becoming more self-aware. Oh my gosh, I love that. We're going to take a break, Carrie, but I love that. A complaint is an unfulfilled need. That is a really nice way of looking at it. I don't know if I've heard it quite like that. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, When we come back here on Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, Carrie Williams and I, we're going to wrap up the show about how to reach our goals. And we still have a lot of juicy stuff to talk about self-worth, self-care practices, um, and how goal setting is changing for millennials from previous generations. So if you're interested in that, because I know I am, stay with us. We'll be right back. Tune into the wisdom of your soul for guidance on living a joyful life. On Soul Wisdom Radio, Wendy will provide inspiration to raise your vibration and connect with your higher self and guides. Learn how to balance your ego and to progress spiritually on Soul Wisdom Radio with Wendy Rose Williams. Visit wendyrosewilliams.com or Transformation Talk Radio to learn more about a healing session with Wendy and her events and publications. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living, LLC. For more information about Karen, visit karenbenton.com. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in each month to Synergenetic Living Radio, where Rick and Grace Paris discuss the synergenetic way of life, what it means to truly change your perspective in life, what it means to take control of your life and manifest your true desires. For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, check out SynergeneticLiving.com. Get clear on the life you desire and the current life you are creating and what is between the two. Synergenetic Living, living life loud. Welcome back to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly, and I'm here with the wonderful Carrie Williams, who is talking with us about how to reach your goals. Now, Carrie, one thing that I think is really interesting is we all learned in school the idea of the SMART goals, SMART being an acronym, and your book talks about great goals, and I would love if you could share with our listeners you know, the difference and why you felt this was important. Sure. I would love to. So I learned smart goals in school, not to date myself. Um, and smart goals are really great if you are working towards a goal that somebody else gave you and it's a project management style goal. But that's not the type of goal the modern day person is setting. We're really, we really care about individual life changing goals. And so I revamped the smart goal a little bit to make it great. And so it is also an acronym and the G stands for genuine, which means that Nowadays, for a person to achieve a goal, they have to really want it. It has to align with their core values Mm -hmm. and their core beliefs. If it's just a goal that somebody else gave them, they're not likely to work towards it. The R stands for reachable. And I don't mean make it easy. I mean, given the time and the energy that you're willing to invest in this process, is it possible for you Mm -hmm. to reach this goal? The E is exact. The more specific we can be with your goal, the more clear we can be with that visualization, the better, because we need to know where that finish line is so that we can pace ourselves to it, but also we can celebrate when we've reached it, right? Mm, totally. Um, the A stands for affirmative, and I mean this in two ways. One, in the way that you phrase your goal, I'm sure that you've, you've spoken to people who have said, you need to phrase your goal like you've already accomplished it. So <laughs> saying my goal was to be a millionaire, then I would say, I am a millionaire. I am a millionaire. <laughs> Here's the problem. I don't I think know that exactly works. exactly how many dollars <laughs> it sends are in my bank account. And right now it's not a million. Yeah. <laughs> so I immediately go, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Now, on the other side, we don't want to say, no, I'd really like to be a millionaire. Yep. Because that lacks commitment and conviction. If we say, I want to be a millionaire, it's a little more conviction, but really, we want to phrase it affirmatively and say, I will be a millionaire. There you go. Take ownership and have a plan. The second part of the affirmative is we are psychologically designed to work towards goals where we are achieving or gaining or growing as opposed to avoiding or negating something. Yes. Yes. And so many of our goals we set are inherently negative. Yes. I will lose 20 pounds. That's a yes. negative goal. I will stop or I will quit smoking. That's a yes. negative goal. If we can shift them and phrase them 
as an approach goal instead, mm-hmm. we're automatically more likely to reach them. So instead of saying, I will quit smoking, say, I will have happy, healthy lungs. There you go. Right? Same yes. end result. But the problem is if I say I'll quit smoking and I slip and have a cigarette, I failed. Yes. If I say I'll have happy, healthy lungs and I slip and have a cigarette, I change strategy. You can still have happy, healthy lungs. Yes. And then the T is my favorite. It stands for totalitarian. And I don't mean to be a goal Nazi, but what I mean is recognize if the goal that you have set is in your control. Because I work with a lot of performers and actors and directors and writers. And when they come in, their goal is, I want to win the Oscar or I want to book the job. The dilemma is they cannot control that. They can do everything right and everything in their power and still not book the job because that depends on somebody else's choice. So what is the way of getting around that? One of two things. You either have to recognize that you've set a master goal that is out of your control and really focus on the sub goals, or you need to shift it and say, if your job is, if you want to book, book the job, say you want to go in and book the audition, what are the things that you need to do to make that happen? And that's what we make our goal instead of that outcome. Ah, We make the process or the approach, the goal instead of the outcome. You'll still get the outcome. But it's not about, but exactly. But otherwise, because you don't want to fail if you've done everything you can and you still don't get the outcome. Right. Because here's what happens. If you do, if you put all your energy in and you do everything right and you still don't achieve your goal, what do you think happens the next time you try to set a goal? Yeah. You're going to have a lot less enthusiasm about it. Yeah, you go, well, last time it didn't work, so mm-hmm. why so should I try so hard this work? time? Then what's the point? Yeah, I think that's really so important. If you, can, if you can include those great elements, you're already 80% more likely to achieve your goal just by including the, the G-R-E-A. Yeah. So. And then what's the other 20? Is now Okay, tell me how self-care factors in. Is that the other 20% or is that just kind of all of it? I know as a psychologist, self-care is super important. People don't do enough of it. How does that no, help we you don't. achieve your goals? Yeah. Well, self-care is kind of the foundation for goal achievement. Um, if you try and achieve a goal without proper self-care, it's like you're you know, building a house in the swamp without a foundation. Yep. You can maybe get the walls up, but they're going to be rickety. And at the first sign of trouble, it's going to collapse. Because self-care is really making sure that you're mentally, emotionally, and physically in a good, solid place so that you can perform at peak performance. And we really take it for granted. We abuse our bodies and expect them to perform. And if we were athletes, we wouldn't do that. No. But for some reason, as mere mortals, we make it okay. (laughs) So when I talk about self-care, I talk about sleep. Sleep is really, really important. Sleep is a weapon, Um, my mama used to say. Yeah, it is a weapon. <laughs> and here's the tricky thing that we don't realize. 90% of the population needs at least eight hours of sleep a night. 5% oh, yeah. can survive and thrive on less and 5% on more. The average American gets about six hours of sleep a night. Wow. I get like eight and a half. I'm not going to lie. I love my sleep, but I work for myself. I get to set my own hours. So, right. Uh, yeah, I live for sleep. I, and then sometimes I'll sleep for that long and I'm still exhausted. You know, it, it's life is really, really tiring. Um, okay, so that's really important. Sleep and then I'm sure diet and nutrition, right? Diet and nutrition. And it, it's, it's eating as much as your body needs and not more than it needs. Yeah. And I don't ascribe to any one particular menu or diet plan. It is whatever works for you. But make sure that you are fueling yourself and yeah. not feeding emotions. Oh, that's, uh, that's definitely something I've, I've been working on a lot lately. You don't realize how much you're eating your emotions until you like stop eating carbs and sugar. And then you're like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I've been eating all well, my emotions. <laughs> yeah, that's another way to practice self-awareness, right? Every yes. time you go for food, say, totally. wait, am I really hungry or yes. do I need something else? That is, that's been really helpful for me on this journey for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you, Carrie... Oh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Before, are there any other major points of self-care that we need to talk about? Uh, the only other thing I would say and is if you're depressed, reaching a goal is not going to make you not depressed. Yeah, that's true. Depressed is a chemical imbalance in your brain, and you can work with a coach and work with a therapist at the same time. They are yeah. not mutually exclusive. 
Mm-hmm. So if you have actual clinical depression, please work on that simultaneously or first because that won't yeah. go away if you hit a goal. Yeah, that's also very good advice. Um, I wanted to ask quickly, I know we have like two minutes left, <laughs> but um, I wanted to ask about how how is goal setting changing for millennials compared to different generations? Do you have any thoughts on that? I do. So, you know, each generation seems to be kind of the pendulum swing from the generation before. Yes. And so millennials were raised by parents who really believed that it was important for their children to believe they could do anything or have anything. And they were encouraged to follow their passion and focus on being happy. And we also talked about this. They were rewarded for just participating. Yes, everyone gets right? the truth. And yeah. not for winning. So here's how millennials differ when it comes to goal setting. One, the goals they set have to be aligned with their core values and greater purpose right now because they're simply not willing to set and work for a goal they don't believe in. They won't work for a company that they don't believe in, let alone work toward a goal they don't believe in. And two, they are so much more responsive to positive reinforcement than negative. So you want to give them positive support, encouragement, and validation as opposed to criticism and punishment because they don't have the tools to use that feedback and incorporate it. It just shuts them down in general. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. I couldn't agree more. That's really great advice too, for anybody either who is a millennial or who's working with millennials to be aware of this in the way that you choose to motivate. Pretty much all of us, right? (laughs) (laughs) I guess I'm technically a millennial, but I'm like, right. I feel like I'm like right on the cusp, but I'll take it. I don't know. Um, Oh my gosh, that's it. That's all we have time for today. Carrie Williams, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thank you so much for having me. This was a ton of fun. Oh, totally. It's been lovely to have you. And um, I'll have to look you up when I'm back in Hollywood, you know, writing my screenplay in my book. Maybe you can, (laughs) maybe you can (laughs) have me. (laughs) Um, I also want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in to Lucid Planet Radio. I always have such a great time. And you can join me the first Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And find out more and listen to all the shows on the lucidplanet.com, Facebook, Twitter, Lucid Planet with Dr. Kelly, et cetera. I hope you had a great Halloween. Happy November. Much love. And I will speak to you in a couple weeks. Take it easy. Bye. You've been listening to the hit show, Lucid Planet Radio, with renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff. Tune in each week as we illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. This hit show will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake up to the greatest version of yourself. Learn how to navigate the global shift of consciousness as you explore the deeper knowledge, passion, and purpose within. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for upcoming show topics and to contact Dr. Kelly.